The key of C major has no sharps or flats. It's all white notes. And the key is just the set of notes that are in the major scale. And we know a C major scale has all white notes, and it's the only scale without any sharps or flats. So let's construct another major scale starting on G, so G major. If you remember, the formula for a major scale is, starting on any note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So a major scale starting on G would be, G doesn't count as a step, right, because it's the first note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and finally half step. So the notes in a G major scale are G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. Now why did I call this note F sharp and not G flat? Because in any major scale, you want to have all the letters represented, and you don't want to repeat a letter. If I called this note G flat, there would be no F in the scale, because the note preceding it is E, and the note following it is G. So the G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. There's one black key, which is a sharp in this context. So the key of G major has one sharp, F sharp. Now let's construct a G major chord. A major chord, remember, is the 1, 3, and 5 sounded together. So a G major chord would be 1, G, 3, B, or 5 is D. G, B, and D. That's a root position G major chord. How about first inversion? That would be the third as the lowest note, right? So B, D, and G. First inversion. And second inversion would be with the fifth on the bottom. So D, G, and B, like this. So root position, first inversion, and second inversion. So when we were working in C major, we said that the interval from C to E is called a major third. So that's the distance from the root, C, to the third of the major scale, which is E. Now what note is a major third above G? Well, if we follow the same logic, it will be the third of the G major scale. So G is one, A is two, and now the third is B. And how about a perfect fourth? Well, if we start on C, a perfect fourth above, one, two, three, four, is the fourth degree of the major scale, which is F. So starting on G, a perfect fourth interval would be, well, G is one, two, three, four. It would be, if, if it's the fourth degree of the G major scale, it would be C. How about a perfect fifth? That's from the root to the fifth degree of the major scale. So let's see, so G is one, two, three, four, five. It would be D. And a major sixth is the root to the sixth degree of the scale, right? So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. It would be E. And how about a major seventh? Well, that's the distance between the root and the seventh degree of the scale. And in the key of C, there are no sharps or flats. But in the key of G, we have F sharp. So let's figure out the seventh degree of the G major scale. So G is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It would be F sharp. So that would be a major seventh interval, G to F sharp. And of course, we know a major second is the same as a whole step or two consecutive half steps. So that would be G to A. What does it mean to say that the interval from G to B, a major third, is the same as the interval from C to E? It means that the mathematical difference between these two frequencies, G to B, is the same as the mathematical difference between these two frequencies, C to E. And it's the same with all these intervals. The distance between these two frequencies, which is a perfect fifth, is the same as the distance between these two frequencies, another perfect fifth. 
just starting on a different note. Now remember in the first video, I talked about consonants and dissonance. A consonant interval sounds pleasing or resolved, and a dissonant interval sounds unsettled or unresolved. And that our preference for certain musical intervals is not arbitrary, but actually has to do with the mathematical relationships between pitches. Now that you're familiar with intervals and key signatures, I'll explain this in more depth. Before humans knew anything about the mathematics of music, of frequencies, intervals, and harmony, musical conventions developed that were based on what sounded pleasing to the ear. In most of these traditions, the most consonant intervals were thought to be, first, uh, unison, which I haven't mentioned. Unison is the sounding of the same exact pitch. So if two people are singing middle C, they're singing in unison. After, after unison, the octave is the next consonant pitch. After the octave, the next most consonant pitch is perfect fifth, then perfect fourth, and then either minor third or major third. So musical scales, actually before scales they had what's called modes, but we'll talk about that in a future lesson. For now we'll call them scales. They were constructed based on the octave, perfect fifth, and perfect fourth intervals. Then the Greek mathematician philosopher Pythagoras discovered that if you take a string of a given thickness and length, and if you pluck, pluck it, that string vibrates and produces a certain pitch, right? So Pythagoras discovered that if you cut that string in half, it will produce a pitch exactly one octave higher than the first pitch. And if you take the original length of the string and you cut a section that's two-thirds the length of the original, exactly two-thirds the length, it will produce a pitch that's a perfect fifth above the original pitch. And if you go back to the original string and you cut a section that's three-fourths the length of the original, you get a pitch that's a perfect fourth above the original pitch. So he discovered that the intervals considered most consonant or most pleasing are the intervals that relate to one another by the smallest whole number ratios. Consonant intervals have the simplest, cleanest mathematical relationships. So when I say that this interval, C to G, a perfect fifth, is the same as this interval, G to D, another perfect fifth, you can prove that mathematically if you take a string whose pitch is middle C and you cut it to two-thirds the length, you'll find that the resulting pitch is G above. And then if you cut that, dare I say it, G string to two-thirds its length, the resulting pitch will be a perfect fifth above that, which is D. So for this week, get acquainted with G major. Play the scale, play the intervals in the scale, and construct a G major chord and go through its inversions.